Aloha. Welcome back to the Anxiety Coaches Podcast. I'm your host and coach, Gina Ryan, and I'm so happy to be with you again today as we consider the many ways to bring your mind and body back to its natural peace and calm. In today's episode, I want to talk about anxiety's causes and some of the other contributing factors that could be going on in our lives, causing us stress and anxiety. Now, understanding anxiety's sources is what we're going to talk about today, but I also want to acknowledge that clearing anxiety panic doesn't necessarily mean eliminating stress or anxious feelings from our lives, but instead changing how we respond to it. Today, I want to focus on recognizing the various causes of anxiety and the role of thinking patterns in our anxiety. Now, a lot of people think that once you have worked through your anxiety and learned mindfulness, have calmed your nervous system, that you are good to go and nothing is ever going to ruffle your feathers again. So right up front here, I want to say that's not true. We are always going to have to deal with the waves of life, the curveballs that life can throw us. This is never going to end. What changes is how we deal with this, how we can actually recognize what's going on and how we can use our own thinking and our own way of living, all our daily practices in keeping ourselves away from going down the wormhole. You will still have anxious feelings in your life. That is going to happen, but they are not going to take you away from your life and living a great life anymore. You will be able to understand what's happening and not feed this pattern perpetually. It's a wonderful way to live, and you can totally get out of this anxiety panic wormhole and live a great life. So let's get into some of the causes and contributing factors. Now, before I get started, I want to say that the next episode, episode 1080, will be about the subconscious and how the subconscious mind shapes our anxiety and what we can do to rewire our responses and, again, live a better life. So today we'll talk about causes and contributing factors, and next episode we'll get more into the subconscious mind, which also plays a part, but it's bigger and I can't fit it all into one episode here. So let's get going. Anxiety is really a complex emotional response. It's a response that can be triggered by all kinds of factors, including biological, psychological, environmental, and social influences. Now, these causes often interact with each other to contribute to the development of anxiety, panic, stress disorders, anxiety disorders, And we are going to talk right now about some of the key causes. See if any of these are playing out in your life. Genetics and family history is first up. Anxiety can actually run in families. It suggests a genetic component. Again, this isn't because your mother had it that you're going to have it. It is a genetic component And individuals with a family history of anxiety are often more likely to develop anxiety themselves. However, genetics alone is not the sole determinant. Environmental factors also play a significant role. What is going on in your household with your family, those are your genetic people, can be what is also playing a part in your developing anxiety, not just genetics. Now, the second one that I have here for you is brain chemistry. Of course, our brain is working nonstop and imbalances in neurotransmitters 
all kinds of neurotransmitters, such as serotonin, dopamine, GABA, can affect our mood regulation and therefore contribute to anxiety. These chemical imbalances may lead to heightened anxiety responses. These are not easy to pinpoint and find. We cannot get into the brain and measure these. So there are a lot of other things going on that we can do, which is lifestyle changes for good health. Good health is good brain chemistry. We'll get into that later, but I want to talk now on the next piece of what is possibly contributing to your anxiety, and that is personality traits. We come into this world with certain personality traits, like being highly sensitive. You could be a perfectionist or having low self-esteem. All of these can predispose someone to being more anxious or having anxiety. People with a tendency toward negative thinking or excessive worry may be more vulnerable to anxious feelings. So we have to take that into account. The fourth one is trauma and stress. Traumatic experiences, especially in early childhood, such as abuse, neglect, or the loss of a loved one, can lead to chronic anxiety. Ongoing stress from work, relationships, or life changes can also be a cause, as can post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. This is a very specific anxiety disorder that often follows trauma. The fifth one is medical conditions. Certain medical conditions such as heart disease, thyroid problems, respiratory disorders, and chronic pain can trigger or worsen anxiety. Medications and withdrawal from substances like alcohol or drugs can also contribute. So that's in the medical column there. Number six is substance abuse. Alcohol, drugs, and caffeine can either cause or worsen anxiety. While some people use substances to cope with anxiety, long-term use can create or amplify anxiety disorders. This is when they are abusing a substance. So we start with just using it. We end up trying to use it to help with a issue we're dealing with, and then we are into substance abuse. Watch the alcohol, the drugs, the caffeine even. I know it sounds like something everybody uses, and it can be abused, and it definitely can worsen anxiety. The seventh one I have are the environmental factors, the environmental stressors such as financial instability, living in a high crime area, or exposure to violence on a regular basis. All of this can contribute to chronic anxiety. Social pressures and expectations can also cause anxious responses, especially in individuals that are already prone to worry. By the time we get to the end of this episode, you're going to see that no one gets out unscathed. Everyone has contributing factors or causes in their life that could move that needle toward them being more anxious. So we just learn how to recognize these things and information then becomes power and we can do something about it. So I think now we'll look a little bit at the factors that can contribute to anxiety. These can actually influence the severity or the persistence of anxiety. We often wonder why someone went through the same thing I did. Why do I have PTSD and they don't? We are so different and our backgrounds, our subconscious, our life up to this point, our life history has been different. And so we can be more or less susceptible to intensifying our anxiety symptoms from these factors. The first one are stressful life events. Significant changes in life, such as divorce or job loss, moving 
or the death of a loved one can trigger or worsen anxiety. The unpredictability and the uncertainty associated with these events can overwhelm an individual's coping mechanisms. The second one is childhood experiences. Early life experiences, such as growing up in a stressful or neglectful environment or facing constant criticism, can increase vulnerability to anxiety later in life. Children who experience overprotective or overly harsh parenting may develop anxiety disorders. And again, it comes down to that little creature that came in. You know, their personality that they came in with, their genetics that they came in with, along with all of these experiences. The third one are cognitive patterns. Negative thinking patterns such as catastrophizing, which is just expecting the worst outcome, or all or nothing thinking, or black and white thinking, or focusing on past failures, can intensify anxiety. People who tend to anticipate negative outcomes or have difficulty managing uncertainty often experience heightened anxiety. The fourth one is lack of coping skills. This is difficulty managing stress or navigating difficult situations, and it can exacerbate anxiety. Individuals who have, like, lack effective coping skills or social support networks may find it harder to regulate their anxiety when we don't have the skills. And again, the beauty of this is skills can be learned. This can be remedied. Number five is lifestyle choices. Sleep deprivation, poor diet, lack of physical activity can contribute to heightened anxiety. Now, engaging in unhealthy behaviors such as procrastination or avoidance can also increase anxiety over time. And what we can end up seeing here is these feed into each other. Now, some of these things maybe cannot be easily remedied. New parents will have sleep deprivation. You will drop everything to take care of the new child, the baby in the house. But poor diet, maybe it can be remedied, maybe it can't. Depending on your life circumstances and the age you are and what kind of environment you are living in, lack of physical activity, we can change some of these things and we should change or opt into changing the things that we can. Because the unhealthy behaviors that can come out of not eating right, feeling right, not having enough exercise, actually leads to us not doing more. When we don't do much, we tend to not do much. What is that a body at rest tends to stay at rest. And so we want to watch out for things like procrastination or avoidance because these can increase our anxiety over time. Number six is social and cultural pressures. So societal expectations, including pressures to succeed, social comparisons, and fear of failure can greatly contribute to feelings of inadequacy and anxiety. Social anxiety disorder, for instance, is often fueled by concerns about judgment and evaluation by others. And while this was always around, our social media has contributed greatly to all of this. Being on the screens all the time and constantly being bombarded by images and statements about how marvelous everyone else is doing and why are you not doing that too, can really put so much pressure on people that they feel anxious to the point of having an anxiety disorder, being so concerned about socially being acceptable that they don't go out or that they only stay home on their screens or that they feel inadequate. 
A lot of this can be changed by how you are looking at it and where you are spending your time. Number seven is fear of uncertainty. This is a big one because we may come into life with this, but we can work on it and change it. Many individuals with anxiety have a heightened intolerance for uncertainty. And this fear of the unknown and the inability to control outcomes can contribute to chronic worry and anxiety. And I know from the people I work with and the people in our group coaching membership, fear of uncertainty is huge. So just check in, see if this is something in your life. We can work with this. This is not something that we have to just accept. We can work on our tolerance levels. And the eighth one I have for you is work or academic pressure. High demands in the workplace or school environment, unrealistic expectations, and the fear of underperformance can lead to anxiety. This is particularly relevant for people with perfectionistic tendencies who feel an immense pressure to achieve success. Again, this is something you may have come into this world with. You may have high pressure on yourself and perfectionistic tendencies. But again, this can all be worked with once we are paying attention to it and we can see what are my stumbling blocks? What am I dealing with? What can I work on? Anxiety is influenced by a combination of genetic, biological, psychological, and environmental factors. And while certain causes, such as genetics or past trauma, may be beyond a person's control, other factors like lifestyle choices, thinking patterns, and coping mechanisms can definitely be modified to reduce anxiety symptoms. Understanding the causes and contributing factors really can help you better manage your anxiety and see where you can work on it and get appropriate support for that. I hope today's show was helpful in that. We get so down on ourselves so often that Either there's something wrong with us that can't be fixed or blame it all on genetics, nothing's ever going to change. There is so much that we can do that it is our responsibility to work on the things that we do have control over. I hope you can find a few little spots where you can make some changes and I hope you keep listening to the show for some help in making those changes. Remember, next episode, I'm going to jump into the subconscious piece of this, how the subconscious shapes anxiety, and some information on how we can change our responses with that. And now for today's quote. You don't have to control your thoughts. You just have to stop letting them control you. And that's from Dan Millman. I'll be back in a few more days with another podcast. Until then, be well and aloha.